Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Golden Astrologer podcast. This is Deb McBride, and I am broadcasting from beautiful Escazú, Costa Rica. And today is Sunday, December 13th, 2020, and we are in, we are in it. <laughs> we are in the big moment, okay? So this is, this is it. This is the big moment. And the first big moment is tomorrow, which is, occurs at 11.17 a.m. Eastern Time, and that is a solar eclipse, otherwise known as a new moon, close to the nodes, and this one is close to the south node. This is in Sagittarius. And the thing is that when you are um, having a south node eclipse, uh, it usually means we're releasing something. We are aware of things we don't need to be aware of anymore. We become aware of things we don't need. We get rid of certain things and stuff and people and situations and we clear house. And it may be a big clear house. It may be a small clear house. It depends on where 23 degrees of Sagittarius falls in your chart. And hopefully you have your astrological chart and you know where that is. And, um, one of the things about a solar eclipse is energies get intense. And right now, the energies are getting intense. And they have been intense the last couple of days. And I, I feel it. I know other people feel it. The animals are feeling it. The frogs are singing higher. The, the cats are screaming louder. The, the birds are going back to their nests. <laughs> and... We are going back to our nest because right now we feel like we're under siege. And so there's a part of us that just wants to go back to bed. And so, you know what? This is the stay in bed episode of the Golden Astrologer podcast. Because if that's what you need to do, then go ahead and do it. And don't judge yourself and don't let anyone else judge you. But this is an enormous, enormous change this week. Because it's not just a solar eclipse. And it, a solar eclipse is enough. It brings up enough emotions. And, you know, this eclipse is with Mercury, which is the planet of communication. And so our minds are heated up as well. Our brains are on fire. You know, that's great for new ideas and new things. But we might say things we regret later. So we have to be very careful about that. But this is not just a solar eclipse. First of all... Um, we are, as if you've been listening, we are having the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction very soon. It will be a week from Monday. It'll be a week from tomorrow. It'll be the 21st. But this Thursday, they have to go into Aquarius first. Both of those planets have to go into Aquarius. And so Saturn will go in on Thursday, shortly after midnight Eastern time, and it will go into Aquarius. And then on Saturday, so that's Thursday, Thursday, Saturn goes into Aquarius. On Saturday, Jupiter goes into Aquarius at 8.07 a.m. Eastern time. So within, you know, less than 48 hours of each other, they are going to be in Aquarius, both of them. And so that's it. They are leaving the signs they are currently in. Saturn is at 29 degrees of Capricorn right now, and uh, Jupiter is at 28 going to 29. Now, 29 degrees of any sign is an anoretic degree, not anorexic, anoretic degree. And when we hit 29 degrees of any sign, a number of things happen. The first thing that happens is we, I feel like we are digging up every ounce of the last bits of juice that are from that sign. So if you've got 30 degrees of a sign and Aquarius is coming around the bend and you're leaving Capricorn, then you are getting the last juices of Capricorn. It's like, you know, when you've got a coffee pot and it's been sitting on the burner for a while and like the, it's sort of boils off or heats off and you've got like the most densest part of the coffee. Yeah, it's like that. It's like, ooh, that's deep and dark and rich and burnt and oof, <laughs> strong, strong. So it's the most intense part of the sign. It is the end of the sign. It is, you know, we're saying so long, farewell, you know, and this for Saturn is 28 years, 20, you know, 30 years. And 
this is the first time, you know, Saturn has been in Capricorn. These last three years, Saturn's been in Capricorn um, since, you know, the the 80s. And now we're going into Aquarius, which is where it entered in like the late 80s, early 90s. Now, what happens is we are having... <laughs> that word again, death anxiety, because we're ending a cycle. And this is a huge cycle. This is a huge cycle because it's Capricorn, because it's Saturn in its own sign. And it's been bouncing back and forth with Jupiter and Pluto all year. And Saturn went into Aquarius. And you'll say, Deb, Saturn went into Aquarius. You told us about this back in March. Yes, it did for a couple of months, but it wasn't serious. It's like, hmm, I'm going to go to the car showroom and look at the car and not buy the car just yet. So I'm going to go home and think about the car for six months, eight months, and then I'm going to go buy the car, <laughs> you know, um, or whatever else, the house. <laughs> Uh, in this case, we are, it's leaving its own sign, which is very powerful. And when we have something at 29 degrees, we feel every ounce of everything that has happened and we're at an ending and endings are powerful and endings such as this one provoke all sorts of stuff that each of us has in our subconscious around endings. If you ended something at 29 Capricorn at some point in your life, you know, when Saturn was there or, or, you know, your son, your progressed son was at 29 Capricorn. Wow. Then you have something heavy to deal with. Okay. And you are getting triggered and most of us are getting triggered right now. Even if, even if it's not 29 Capricorn, even if you have, if you have a planet at 29 degrees of anything and, you know, it made a progression in your chart and that's an advanced technique, call me about that if you'd like to know more, um, you are going to get a very serious trigger because you are getting the end of something and the beginning of something new. And Saturn is very important because it takes three decades to come back. Now, when we are talking about Saturn, it's lessons, it's the patriarchy, it's rules, it's regulations, it's where we've been a good boy or good girl all this time and where we've had to maintain integrity and where we've had to, you know, follow the rules. Aquarius doesn't follow the rules. Aquarius likes to break out, revolt, be contrary, and be innovative. And if you don't break the rules once in a while, you aren't innovative. And if you don't fail once in a while, you aren't innovative. You've got to, you've got to start from scratch sometimes. And we are starting this huge, huge, huge cycle. So we are leaving Capricorn, and that can send you to your bed. <laughs> And it's not just Saturn. It's Jupiter at the same time. So Jupiter is like following close behind 29 degrees. Oh my God, Jupiter is leaving Capricorn and it's going into Aquarius. And it's doing that next Saturday. But it's still the anoretic degree. It's still the experience of the end of something. And it's the same end of something as Saturn. So now they're not conjunct exactly until Monday the 21st on the solstice, but they are right neck and neck with each other. It's like a horse race. And they are completely bringing things to an end. Tomorrow, Venus is going to be very much at the end of Scorpio and moving into Sagittarius on Tuesday, 1120 a.m. Eastern time. And when we do that, when so that's another planet that's at 29 degrees. So even though Venus is not in Capricorn and is not doing what the other two are doing, it's still 29 degrees. Yesterday, the moon was at 29 degrees. I think everybody felt like crap yesterday. Like so many of us just took to our beds or took to our nap or took to the TV or something. We just, it's, it's not that we can't cope with it because these are coping mechanisms, certainly. Taking a nap is, can, can be considered a coping mechanism or you're just tired. But it's, it, these are coping mechanisms that we all have right now. And what are your coping mechanisms? What are your coping mechanisms for the end of something? If something is leaving and, and going on to something new, how do you feel? After the year we've had, how do you feel? 
Now, back in January, there was an eclipse, and then a couple days later, Saturn and Pluto conjunct. So it was all at the same time. The eclipse was with Mercury, it was the sun, it was the moon, it was Mercury, and it was Saturn and Pluto. Very close to the eclipse. And they moved into exact conjunction two days later, but still, they were part of the eclipse. So we began this year, this crazy 2020 year, this bizarre year, as an eclipse and Saturn, Pluto, and Mercury together. And it was a solar eclipse. It was the sun and the moon together. Um, one of the things that was so hard about that was that we were, oh, I'm sorry, that was a lunar eclipse. Solar eclipse was the day after Christmas last year. There was a lunar eclipse. It was just the sun that came. It was the sun, Mercury, and the node, and Saturn and Pluto. <laughs> That's enough. We didn't need the moon there. The moon came a few days later, you know, about a week or two later, two weeks later. It wasn't fun. <laughs> you know, it was an intense, intense beginning to the year. And so when the, when the intensity is like that, and then we go to the end of the year, and here we are, you know, nearly 12 months later, it's nearly a year later, and it's a solar eclipse. It's not a lunar, that was a lunar eclipse. Um, but well, here we are again. It's an eclipse with another major conjunction. And Saturn's part of that. So Saturn was getting revved up to join Pluto back then, back in January. And now it's getting revved up to join Jupiter. Now it's been with Jupiter, but this is a different story. Because we're not in the domain of Saturn. And we're not with Pluto anymore. The, that cluster, that threesome is breaking up. And Jupiter and Saturn are going together into a new sign. And that means it's, it's, we're all feeling it on a profound level. This is not something lighthearted. It's not something where you can go, ha ha, it's, uh, I, don't, I don't feel a thing. You know, you're going to feel something, something, and something is coming to an end. And it may be, you know, maybe the end of, you're going to partner with someone in a business or in your love life. Maybe a good ending. It's like, oh, I'm not going to be alone anymore. I've, I've found the person of my dreams. Um, I found a really good business partner and, or something of that nature. It doesn't have to be, it's not the end of your life. It's not necessarily the end of a relationship, although it could be, but it could be the end of being alone and starting a relationship. It could be any ending. It could just be a psychological recognition and epiphany, an aha moment that gives you the impetus to move forward. But our subconscious mind is tricky and it makes us feel like we're dying on some certain level and we're not. Um, we are shedding a skin, but we're not dying and we're not going to die. And we are having some really powerful, intense astrology this week. So expect things to shift, expect your subconscious to kick its heels up. Expect that you're going to resist things and you're going to not want to finish stuff. Because when we get to endings, we all have everybody, nobody is exempt. Everybody has a certain level of death anxiety. Some have more than others. Some have a tiny bit of it. Some people say to me, oh, I'm not afraid to die. But when it comes to like ending a relationship, they can't let go. So, you know, that's, that's death anxiety. Um, when we have a release like this, and it's a huge release, then we, what we are doing is we are experiencing a powerful, powerful transition. And our subconscious mind says, ah, transition, ah, what's this? So uh, it's, it doesn't feel good right now. It doesn't feel good. If people are, people are afraid to step forward, people are losing their cool, people are losing their mind, people are, you know what I mean, for a minute, they're losing their mind. Um, and people just, they just can't handle any more intensity because when three planets are piled up on top of each other, and it doesn't matter if it's not exact, they're piled up on top of each other in, um, you know, in one sign, in an area of the zodiac that talks about rules and regulations and government and, you know, that kind of stuff, it is extremely important to recognize that and recognize that 
It has been intense. It's been nonstop. It, it just, we're all tired of it. We're all tired of it. It's like, what, what another transition? And now, you know, we, well, there's more. So, <laughs> I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I, I want to go to bed. I want to watch TV. I want to do my nails. I want to put my head under the pillow. I want to take a sleeping pill. I want to uh, have a cup of cocoa and hug, hug my teddy bear. And I want to just forget, forget. I mean, it's December for Pete's sake. We want to forget this year. But Aquarius is new energy. And what feels awful now a week from now may feel like a breath of fresh air. And Aquarius is always a breath of fresh air. It's like, ha, it's Aquarius. It's electric. Things are sparkling. I can feel it. It's like the Christmas lights are blinking. You know, everything is like, yeah, neon. It's exciting. And so, you know, we are getting triggered in a major way. So your job is to see where you're getting triggered and how you're getting triggered and what is triggering you. Is it, are you, you know, annoyed and irritated about something? Are you um, being profoundly, um, you know, challenged at the moment? Maybe it's work. Maybe it's colleagues. Maybe it's your life partner. Maybe it's your kids. Um, Maybe it's your cat. <laughs> um, maybe you are in a place where you feel like you have done enough already and you've just run out of steam. And why should I transit? Why should I believe that this transition is going to be any different? Why should I believe it's going to get better? Why should I believe that it's going to? support me? Why do I, be, why should I even think that I'm getting to a new place in my life? It all feels the same. And that's part of it. That's like, well, you know, if you've been working hard at something, which we often do in Saturn's and Capricorn, and you've made changes and you've stepped up to the plate and you've, you've done things that are, that are like out of the ordinary for you and you've extended yourself and you've taken risks and now you're just zonked. Well, then you don't want to know about another stage of transformation. You really don't. You're just like, I've done everything. What the hell more can I do? And I just, I just need my pillow right now. And good. So good. Take your pillow. Take your pillow. Get into bed, you know, and just relax and just breathe. And, you know, if meditation feels like too much energy right now, <laughs> too much work, then don't do it. Um, I think it always helps. I really do think meditation grounds us and, and also at the same time expands our awareness and our consciousness. So if you are having a subconscious, you know, heel kicking experience, a meditation is going to do you some good. And it really is something profound and powerful when you can make a shift in your meditation. So tomorrow's eclipse is we are going to end something or we have been ending something and it is the precursor to this big conjunction next week. So it's like shedding the skin before we're ready. We're ready, like we're sloughing off in the shower, you know, we're taking that shower and we've got our, scr our favorite scrub and we're sloughing off the dead cells and we are leaving behind something and hopefully it's the strife of this year. And we move into something else. Now, this is interesting because it's not just, well, it's the winter solstice and, and Saturn and Jupiter are coming. It's we are having an eclipse one week before all of that. So there's something ending and something beginning. And, you know, so there's two points you want to look at. You want to look at where 23 degrees Sagittarius is falling in your chart, in your natal chart. And if you have a planet there, you're going to feel it more. If you are a Sagittarius, if tomorrow is your birthday, you're going to feel this. And the other thing is you want to look at where zero Aquarius is. And if Aquarius is, you know, like some place where you like to experience new things, well, then great. This is where you are going to learn something profound. And Jupiter and Saturn are going to stick around together for a while. They're both going to be in Aquarius for a while. Saturn will stay there for two and a half to three years. But Jupiter and Saturn are gonna they're gonna be very closely conjunct. They're not gonna be exact. They're only gonna make that exact conjunction once on the 21st. 
but they are going to stay close conjunct. And if you have planets in early Aquarius, then you are going to feel this. And so you are going to need some support, some recognition of what's going on, some acknowledgement. Don't just think you're going to blast your way through this because that's not what's going to happen. If you are feeling things right now, you are absolutely where you should be. Don't tell yourself, why am I like this? Get up out of bed. You're being lazy. Don't criticize yourself. Allow the experience to wash over you, allow it to speak to you, you know, um, it's, and speech is part of this because the moon will occult Mercury tomorrow at 542 AM Eastern time. And that is, it's, it's getting ready. It's getting revved up to eclipse the sun. And there is the absence of light for a moment. And right now what we're feeling is the absence of light. And once the eclipse passes, once we get into the afternoon, once we get into Tuesday, you know, it's still like, there's still a lot of heaviness in the air, but once we get into Tuesday, it's going to be a different story. It's going to be a new day, but you know, and, and the moon is going to go into Capricorn Monday night. So, you know, it's so much moon is going to go into Capricorn after the eclipse and it's going to hit Pluto and it's going to hit Jupiter and it's going to be really, <laughs> you know, triggering stuff. So we're going to get triggered all week. So maintain your cool. Try not to lose your head. Try not to complain. Try not just understand what's happening. And if you gain enlightenment in this week, and I don't mean the Buddhist kind of enlightenment, like, oh my God, this is it. You know, you're not Buddha. If you, if you gain knowledge and synchronicity and you gain an epiphany, and that's what I mean by enlightenment, this week, and, and you understand things from a, from a very profound perspective, then you are doing really well and great. And write it down. Write it all down. And be with yourself because this, isn't, this is the time to take care of yourself. So today I got a massage and acupuncture. <laughs> And, you know, I learned some things about myself in the process and um, important things. So I'm happy with one thing, you know, particularly that I recognize, although it's still going to be some work, but there's, and then I'm getting some homeopathy from the same person tomorrow. So I'm taking care these are steps to take care of oneself. These are, I'm taking care of my mind, body, and spirit. And that's what we need to do right now. If your body feels like it wants to go to bed, let it go to bed. If your mind is saying, I need work, to, I have to work, take your computer and get into your bed because most of us are working from home right now. So you can take your computer and stay in your PJs with your cup of cocoa and get into bed and make some cookies, have some cookies. And this is the week when, you know, we can be a little indulgent. I'm going to tell everybody we can be a little indulgent. Venus is going into Sagittarius. We, we might want to be a little indulgent this week. Um, and the most important thing is to love yourself and not judge yourself for anything that happens right now. And if the tissue box is nearby and you need it, well, then great. Then you are having a purge and a catharsis and congratulations because it's so important to do that. It really is. And if you can have a catharsis and a purge, then this week, ah, what a relief. What a release of tension. And each and every one of us deserves a break of tension because we're all just hanging in there and we still don't have a lot of information and we're still hoping and wishing and praying and, you know, we're still, uh, you know, in a place where we need, we need to hear some good news and some new news. And I think when Saturn and Jupiter get together, we're going to get some new news instead of the same old news. And... Aquarius is the sign of the rebel. Aquarius is the sign of the contrarian. Aquarius is the sign of the revolutionary. We are not without revolution on some level. Um, we are revolu What we are looking towards is the revolution after the year we've had, where we're ending a major cycle in history, and we're looking at this, and we're going, well, this happened for a reason. And if you can find within yourself those reasons for you and your personal life and your, your loved ones, then you are moving forward 
and letting go and moving into Aquarius in a fresh energy. And it should be palpable, you know, that there's something on the other side of this. And you can, you know, consider this a time that we're going to get some different answers to the questions we've been asking for the last 12 months. And the, the uh, uncertainty. Now, Aquarius. Aquarius is ruled by Uranus, and no planet is more uncertain than Uranus. And so we may still feel uncertain about certain things. <laughs> uncertain about certain things. But if you... This, but remember, we're leaving behind the density of an Earth sign, and we are moving into the lightness of an air sign. Aquarius is, you know, it can be, they can be tough. They can be kind of tough and contrary. And, but they are innovators. And something, what this is really asking us to do now is we're going to move into the next year, 2021, with Jupiter and Saturn together. And we are, we are starting fresh and we are going to assimilate and regroup and really be able to move forward from this year. And I think everybody's going to be happy to hear that. So tomorrow's eclipse hangs in the air until the full moon on the 29th of December at 1028 p.m. Eastern Time. That full moon is Cancer Capricorn. That's going to bring us back to that memory of the full moon, the lunar eclipse, back in January. But it's okay because we're, it's not an eclipse anymore. That full moon on the 29th of December is going to kick out the eclipse season. Yay, this is a short eclipse season. But in between <laughs> tomorrow's eclipse and the full moon on the 29th, we're having the Saturn-Jupiter. So I am going to be back to discuss Saturn-Jupiter next week. We will discuss it on Instagram, and I am available for sessions at thegoldenastrologer.com, book online. And if you'd like to see my Instagram, it's the Golden Astrologer. My Twitter is at Deb Astrology, and we're going to talk about this all week. Go to sleep, have a nap, have some cocoa, and much gratitude to all of you.